Hey, greetings from Bethel Farm. I come across this video by a Zimbabwean farmer who left the UK and come down to Zimbabwe to set up a farm. Please, I want you to listen to him carefully and learn from his mistakes and what has happened to him during his time in Zimbabwe. It's a great lesson. I want to encourage everyone that is into farming to listen to. Thank you. God bless. I'll be back. It's so embarrassing because I've got nothing to show for it. And not only that, I've lost so much money. It's unbelievable. I let my excitement of um, coming back here to Zimbabwe after ah. living in the UK for more than 23 years, that excitement really made me miss so many things that could have made things better for me. You can imagine all the bricks, the cement, it's all, it's all gone. I used to have cabbages, Over here. tomatoes, yeah, 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 all this place. <laughs> It was really nice before. Oh my God. But I just gave up. I got sick of it. You are a perfect example of someone who was really excited to come back, mm -hmm. ventured into something and failed. Yes. Why are you not saying, you know what, I'm done with the Zimbabwe. I'm actually going to go <laughs> back to UK and say, UK, I am sorry, I am back. <laughs> Why? Well, you know what, that's a very, very good question because you see, for you to be successful in life at anything yeah. you have to experience failure because failure is part of the journey to success who do you blame for the things that has happened to you well huh. i blame myself last yeah. time yeah things were amazing here i had so many vegetables all around here what did maya came to this place Yes, when the Maya came to this place. That's amazing. Yes. Ah. And uh, when he came, yeah. there wasn't a lot of development. But uh, after he left, yeah. we had quite a lot going on. We had a lot of vegetables here, butternuts. Ah. We had uh, greens. Yeah. We had a lot of tomatoes there. In fact, let me show you over here. Yeah, let's go. This is the real story. Okay. Mm. Because you don't want a situation where you are telling people yeah. That things are working out. And in actual fact, there are also obstacles. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be, you have to be balanced. Uh, maybe I can start by saying, you know, sometimes you have a vision in your head, you have a dream. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't really end up happening the way you envisioned it. Ah. So what's been happening is um, I made a lot of mistakes. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of mistakes. For example. Yeah. Um, before I came here, yeah. I was obviously asking people, okay, what can I do in Zimbabwe that can earn me a bit of money? Yeah. Uh, one thing you'll find is everyone will tell you mm. as if they're experts. I was told the exactly. Road, exactly. Exactly. I was told the Roadrunner business is the amazing business. <laughs> so I thought to myself, okay, maybe I can just go into that. Yeah. So I went into it blindly. In fact, at one point I had so many chickens. Mm. It looked like things were working out. Yeah. But when I sat down and I started going through the figures yeah. and everything, yeah. I wasn't really making any money. So when you came back from the UK, mm -hmm. you started doing business of roadrunners. Roadrunners. Yo. You know, it takes a lot of guts exactly. to come on camera to your audience yes, of thousands yes. of people exactly. to admit this. Because uh, sometimes, you know, it's embarrassing and sometimes we uh, suffer in silence. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of things can go wrong. Living in the UK, I was used to a certain way of doing things. Mm. For example, even like um, trusting someone to come and fix something for you. Yeah, exactly. Usually, being scammed is the last thing on your mind. Ah. <laughs> but when I came over here now, yeah. I had that same spirit that I had over there. I was scammed so many times, it's unbelievable. Now, just on the road runners yeah. themselves, yeah. obviously I'm not a farmer, right? I'm actually trying to go into the road runner business. Exactly. I didn't know much about the breeds. Most of my uh, knowledge was yeah. on YouTube, right? Yeah. Can you imagine that I was sold a breed of uh, chickens called Croilers? Yeah. But these were Sassos. <laughs> now, how do I know this? There's no way of me telling. Exactly. <laughs> and they look the same, right? But probably that person looked at me and thought, you know what? I can get away with this. So the only way I realized that I had been scammed yeah. was when they started dying. A lot of them were dying because ah. when it comes to these chicken breeds, yes. some of them are disease resistant. So they have different qualities over others. So those particular ones started dying. And I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, why are these chickens dying? 
And then one guy who came to visit my farm, a friend of mine, told me that these are sasos, you know. <laughs> you might as well eat them for meat. <laughs> ah, and bear in mind, I've spent thousands of dollars feeding these chickens, yeah. buying the actual breeds. Exactly. You know, housing them. So it was a very terrible experience. Now, you may be thinking, well, maybe that's the only thing. No, there's more <laughs> crazy stories. You have scammed a, a, a lot of times. So many times. I'll give you a very good example. Another example, by the way. Yeah. I have a well there. Yeah. So I had an agreement with the guy. He was supposed to dig eight meters. Yeah. Right? So as soon as he dug four meters, he said, no, I'm done. <laughs> you know, I need my full payment and that's it. So, this is a local guy, okay, yeah. who lives in our vicinity. Mm -hmm. Because my main spirit, remember I talked about the spirit yeah. of wanting to be here in Africa. Yeah. My dream was, I'm part of a community. Exactly. Right? I'm helping the community. Mm. They're helping me. And we're all growing together. Do you see what I mean? That's what I had. But uh, when I got on the ground, the people that I was expecting uh. to, to work with and build a community with yeah. are the same people that we are really pulling me down i think it's it's a problem with us people we now have that negative basic mentality in our minds we we have that instant gratification we don't think about the future absolutely if he had done his job well next time you're going to recommend him even call him for another job absolutely look the guy as i mentioned is local yeah. right i would have probably needed four or five bowls here exactly do you see what i mean but he messed it up on the first one if I show you the state of it, yeah. you'll be shocked and there's no water. <laughs> but because I didn't want to uh, create a lot of confrontation, I just paid the guy. And I said, you know what, here's the money, but we're done. When it comes to business, we're done. Because I didn't want to go back and forth and, you know, I go and report him to the yeah, police. And yeah. I don't have time for that. You know, I'm trying to settle. This is the well. It's messed up. Big time. You see? So imagine, you pay $500 for this. And it's not even a complete job. Yeah, you need to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So this is the well. Yo. And I paid $500 for this. And you know what the, the implications of this? Yeah. This was supposed to be the well that was supposed to be watering all the vegetables here. I used to have cabbages, Over tomatoes. Here. Yeah, 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 all this place. <laughs> it was really nice before. Oh my God. But I just gave up. I got sick of it. Because the idea was, with all these, all these things in place, my family, the wife, the kids, they're yeah. supposed to be here with me. Exactly. But exactly. I spent almost a year. And right now, it's even more embarrassing because I've got nothing to show for it. Let's talk about your life in the UK. How was it as a Zimbabwean? Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. at first, mm. again, I'll give you the vision, okay? Yeah. Before I left to go to the UK, yeah. I had this vision because I used to watch a lot of football. Yeah, exactly. I used to think everything is just, you know, perfect. Everything's amazing. But the moment you get there, mm. it's different. Really? It's totally different. So I would say I went there when I was very young. I was, uh, what, 21? And uh, while I was there, it was work, work, work. Nonstop. No. It was serious work. No social life at all. No social life. And then the weather was terrible. <laughs> But you know, what made it very uh, difficult for me was I became very lonely. Mm. I started becoming very depressed. But of course, it wasn't like uh, visible or at least I didn't even know what it was. You know, sometimes you just become angry yeah. for no reason. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that was me. In fact, I felt like I developed a character of just becoming so angry and I got so used to it, it became a part of me. Ah. Because it's so tough over there. So on one hand, you're trying to settle. Mm. Right. But mm. on the other hand, you've got bills to pay. You've got a family to take care of and the money is not enough. Yeah. So it hasn't been very easy. This is why my my um, my enthusiasm mm. of wanting to come back here was to sort of like relax. So even here, I don't have much. Right. But I'm at peace. That's important. Do you see the difference now yeah. when I'm over there, I have to make sure I meet this bill. This bill is coming through the, you know, the, the letterbox. This needs to be paid, phone calls everywhere. So just that constantly yeah. in your face. I mean, it was, it's, it's very difficult. And, I, and I'm sure a lot of people can say the same who are actually living in the United Kingdom. I can't say much about uh, the United States because I don't know. But the life is just way too fast. Even the time, it moves so fast, it's unbelievable. 
majority of people who stays in the diaspora from my own discovery i found out that when they come back most of them they want to invest in the rural areas why do you think it's that way yes um there's several factors mm. most people when they go to the diaspora yeah they're living in cities because that's where majority of the work is exactly and the rural life there yeah it's actually even more expensive so i've been told yes <laughs> <laughs> to say you have a, you live in the village yeah while you're in the united kingdom yeah wow no those the, the villages are for the people who have money so it's actually the opposite the cities is where the work is it's so crowded and everything is happening there in the cities so imagine 20 years of living you know in the city hmm, so you want a bit of tranquility quietness so this is why even me ideally i would love to build my house here yeah can you hear i'm hearing the sounds of birds exactly. you know a nice breeze you know waking up to this what more can you what more can you ask for do you see what i mean yeah. so that is why i think a lot of people who are in the diaspora want to go and experience the village life because so, it's it's very quiet it's very laid back so yeah yeah now do you think about giving up if you ever thought of it giving up mm. cannot be part of the journey because if i give up i feel like i've let so, so many people down ah. so if you look at uh, the people that saw my first video yeah. i mean i saw the comments they were hundreds of comments so i felt like a lot of people were looking at that and felt inspired so me giving up is almost like saying to everyone that felt that you know <laughs> that excitement that you know what it's not possible you know so i have to find a way to make this work it it, it can take time yeah. it will uh, it can cost me a lot of money yeah. but this has to work i want this to be a story where we can look back and say okay we had some um, stumbling blocks yes. but we managed to overcome them so what do you have to tell people who are coming back from diaspora to zimbabwe africa in general yeah I, there's a lot of uh, things that i'd like to advise them first of all you need to do your research mm. okay mm. before you even decide on um uh moving back to whatever country Thank it is you. you need to do your research that's number one. number two. You need to have some sort of backup uh, monies, okay? <laughs> Because if you come with 20,000 yeah. to even say Zimbabwe, 20,000 is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. I hope you guys are listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even enough. It's not even enough. Really? You need to have uh, you need to leave, let's say the United Kingdom or wherever you, uh, you you're leaving. Mm. And then when you come here, you need to have some sort of a backup fund where the money is yeah. coming through. Because if you don't have that yeah. and your initial amount of money has dried up, what then? Yo. Second, I mean thirdly, when you come over here, again I'll talk about the vision. Yeah. You are going to come here thinking uh I'm in the same boat with everyone, everyone loves me, everything is all good. But when you get here, yeah. you'll be shocked that you're a lone soldier. You're on your own. I can tell you right now, yeah. I don't get help from anyone. I'm on my own. So I'm pretty much fighting my own battle. If my money is low, I have to make sure that I have to make sure that the money is coming in for me to do what I ever need to do. There's no one you're going to go and say, "Okay, can you lend me some money?" month after month. No, you have to sort yourself out. And also, when you come here, yeah. don't expect to live with people. It can work for a few months. Yeah. And it works while you're on holiday. Yeah. But to make it a permanent thing, yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. What what kind of business is should i venture into when i come back from the diaspora or even anyone who stays in zimbabwe right now right that's a very that's a very very good question so when you come here yeah don't expect to go in and look for uh, to get employed that's one thing mm. or in fact these are my opinions by the way mm. i wouldn't say come here and get employed unless you have a very high you know um experience in whatever field it is yeah. but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. So if you come here you need to sell something. Ah. Okay? And I would even though I'm saying I failed, I would highly recommend that you go into agriculture. Sheesh. Whether it's horticulture or whether it's um uh um, you know chickens, goats, whatever it is. Funny, why am I saying pace. this? Yeah, why am I saying this? Yeah. There's a shortage. Even the chickens themselves. Do you yeah. know there's a shortage of chickens in Zimbabwe? I was shocked because like every farmer that I met 
the, the people that are doing it big, the people that are doing it right, mm -hmm. they told me that we are not meeting the demand. Yes. Ah. That is why, if you look at uh, Irvins, yeah. right, they're actually doing contract farming. They can't even meet the demand. This is the biggest company here in Zimbabwe, right? They can't even meet the demand. We had to import chickens. Can you imagine? It's happening in Zimbabwe. It's happening in Zimbabwe. I met this guy who is doing rabbit farming. Yes. I mean, we look down upon no. rabbit farming. No. no. I was in Blaue recently. <laughs> yes. And we, th there were many of us in the bus. Mm -hmm. We were going to this farm. We were going to learn a goat farming. Mm -hmm. And he started saying, can you imagine when I was growing up, I, I was looking down upon goat farming. Mm -hmm. And right now, people are looking for goat farming. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a high demand. In all these areas, there's a serious demand. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Everyone needs to eat. Exactly. We can look at agriculture and say it's dirty. Even us going to school. We looked at it as uh, agriculture. Who does that? You know? Yeah. But everyone needs to eat. So everywhere you look, you go into the main city. Yeah. You go into residential areas. Yeah. Everyone wants to eat. They want cabbages. They want tomatoes. They want onions. Where do you think they're going to be coming from? <laughs> You know, I think people like me grew up having that perspective on farm that on farming that um, farming is manual labor. Mm -hmm. It was a way of punishment to everyone at school. What do you think about that? What it, what that has done yeah. to our mind? Even me, uh, my mom used to uh, yeah. uh, used to do uh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. So when we used to be woken up in the morning to yeah. go there, it felt like a punishment. Exactly. And. The schooling system does, does not also do a very good job of promoting farming as well. You see. And this is something that I would like to see here, mm. you know, in Zimbabwe. More of uh, promoting the farming side of things. So, yes, it's, it looks like a punishment because it's too manual. Exactly. Do you see what I mean? Exactly. But right now, you and me, if we want to venture into farming, mm. right, mm. we don't have to do the manual stuff. We can just manage it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like me, physically. Do you think I'll be feeding the chickens physically like that? Nah. No. I want to create employment, get some guys who, who are willing to do it, to then do that work. Can I go in the farm and start digging and start applying the foot? No. I get a group of guys, they come in, they work, I pay them, I manage it. That's pretty much, you know, what farming is about. It's, it doesn't mean that you have to do the physical work. So, yes, uh, it does seem that way, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, there's something else I want to show you. Yeah. So I came here, yeah. I was so excited, <laughs> and I said, and someone gave me actually a very good tip. Yeah. He said, do not use, uh, buy bricks, you know, don't waste money. You can just use um, farm bricks. Farm just bricks, make your yeah. Own farm bricks. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Got some local guys. Yeah. <laughs> they came over, <laughs> and now it's a, it's a, it's, it's a pattern, yeah. right? Yeah. Let me show you the bricks. It was very devastating, you know? People who have never done it before, yes, they can actually tell you that we can do it. They'll tell you we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a problem with us. Yes, it's a big problem. But you know what? Yeah. With all this, yeah. Um, like you mentioned something. You mentioned something very interesting earlier on. Yeah. It's the short-term gratification. Exactly. You see, it they don't work. think about the future. They don't. Uh -huh. I want people to know that it's not easy. It's a journey. It's a serious journey, but you know what's exciting? Yeah. When you get to the destination, yeah. it can be very exciting. Ah. Because the goal, yeah. the goal is to get to the destination. Right, so these are the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> and you paid money for this? A lot of money. Yo? A lot of money. In fact, let me give you one as a sample so yeah. you can see how bad it is. <laughs> you guys, look at this. This is not good at all. This is the brick. Can you imagine trying to build something with this? In fact, I think we can even break it, you know? It doesn't last at all. No, no, no. Oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> it's just waking up. I know. So I paid the guys to, to actually mold them. Yeah. And then I paid another guy to, to burn them yeah. in the oven. Yeah. So all that is money wasted. Imagine. So this was a waste of money. A loss. Everything that I wanted to build. I couldn't build. You? <laughs> You've lost so much. A lot of money. If I was you, I'm telling you, I would have given up. You know, I can even go as far as saying I lost um, more than 40,000. I know it seems like it's a crazy number. Yeah. I'll just give you one figure. 
1,000 yeah. road runners. Yeah. If you sell, one, I mean, sorry, um, yeah, 1,000 road runners yeah. at $10 each. Now, think about me feeding those 1,000 road runners for almost a year. Those road runners cost a lot of money. So you're feeding the road runners. <laughs> <laughs> and can you believe the guy I put in charge yeah. to take care of these chickens? Yeah. Uh, what happened is, there was a time I had to rush back to the UK yeah. for two months. In fact, two or three months. Yeah. When I came back, can you believe 1,000 road runners were dead? <laughs> <laughs> really? And these are chickens that roam around. They're not broilers. Exactly. Ro road runners. Road runners. 1,000 were dead. Why? How? That question is not answered till today. <laughs> but ah. just imagine, 1,000 dead. That's why I abandoned the whole project. What's the point? What's the point? One thousand, you see what I mean? 1,000 road runners. 1,000 road runners. Dead. Do you think that it's a good thing as a farmer to be on the ground? Um, yes. 100%. Mm. Do you know why? Yeah. Because when you're on the ground, yeah. at least you can see what is happening. Yeah, exactly. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You can see exactly what is happening. Because being told on the phone, yeah. it doesn't work. Unless you're one of those guys who are very, very lucky to work with a very reliable team, ah. then that's a different case altogether. In the future, I'm going to come back and witness the progress. Yes. And I don't know when, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's going to be a journey for you mm -hmm. and it's not going to be easy. What I'm happy about is that you're consistent. What do you think about agriculture in general? Do you think that agriculture is the backbone of Africa's economy? If Absolutely. We... Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know why? Yeah. We have the perfect uh, climate. Thank you. Right? We, we also have um, the labor. Do you know yeah. we have so many young Africans here? Wants to be employed. Exactly. And did you know yeah. that a lot of the fruits, yeah. vegetables, yeah. they are actually exported to the UK? So you can't go wrong with agriculture. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's amazing. So what we have here, we have a structure. This here. was a major project. I was at home. Mm -hmm. I assigned these guys to to work uh, to work on this. <laughs> now at one point. The wall was actually quite high. Everything was looking good. But guess what happened? Yeah. They called me to say the wall fell over. <laughs> I'm, and I'm, I'm sure I'm you can see little bricks here. And I'm sure you can see the bricks, everything falling over here. Oh you see that? Oh my god, this is a loss. Do you see that? Yeah. So when this happened, at first I said to myself, well, imagine if I had chickens in here. So what was happening was we paid for all the materials. Mm. But what these builders do sometimes is they, they put aside some of the cement. Ah. So they mix, uh, instead of mixing the proper way, yeah. they put more sand. So this is why this thing was not stable. A lot of people, a lot of companies are doing that these days. They are not being fair. There's no yes. integrity at all. Yes. Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah, I think, again, that short-term gratification, it's very sad. Who is going to employ them? You see, like you said earlier on, there's no structures here. Can you imagine a situation where if this guy was, was going to do a very good job, he was going to do even more? Exactly. Do you see what I mean? I was going to need a durable here. You see? I was going to need some houses here. I was going to come and make a video and ask who did this. You're going to recommend. People are going to watch. Exactly. We want the person who did. Exactly. That. Exactly. Who is going to employ them right now? And again, this is a local guy. <laughs> so, can you imagine the relationship now that I'm going to have with the locals? They don't think about that at all. Why? Why are we like this? Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe people think if you're coming from the diaspora, you have a lot of money. So they want to capitalize as much as they can. Capitalize with integrity so that you maintain good no, relationship. They, with they capitalize with, with scamming you. Do you see what I mean? And then it, I, again, I keep saying this. Yeah, it's short term gratification. And it's very sad. It's very, very sad. Where so are this, we going? you can imagine all the bricks, the cement. 
it's all it's all gone <laughs> if it was me i'm telling you my brother mm -hmm. if it was me mm -hmm. i would have beaten a lot of people <laughs> i would have <laughs> we were very unfortunate i asked uh, the guys here yeah. to grow some maize as you know there was some drought yeah, exactly so exactly this didn't grow but again if my well was uh, was functioning this is something that we could have uh, used to uh, irrigate i could have done better research ah uh, right it's important it's very important i could have employed the right people I could have done more background checks. But because I was rushing that excitement, who do I blame, who do I put the blame on? It has to be me. And it's a, it, this is a bold statement because most people who are not very successful, yeah. they blame others. Exactly. Do you see what I mean? They are always pointing fingers. Is that person, is that person, is that person, is that person. Now, throughout this whole video, yeah. I was just uh, giving an idea of what was happening to me. But even the, the wells, right? Yeah. I could have found someone well recommended to come and do the job. But I just asked around and this guy said, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, come, come, come. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. No recommendation, no background checks, nothing. So that's on me. Mm. The chickens. Yes, I was sold a breed of chickens that was not very good. Yeah. I could have gone with an expert to identify this chicken and say you know what this chicken is the proper one this is amazing do you see what i mean but i missed that step and this is one of the reasons why i can't give up because i know what i could have done and now moving forward i know where to fix things so you are recommending people to take it step by step slowly yes. absolutely you see if you want to uh, invest here yeah you have to take baby steps Mm. Don't come here with 20, 30, 40,000 your whole savings and just dump it here. No. You have to do everything slowly, slowly, bit by bit. See the results? Or even, say, let's talk about the chickens themselves. Yeah. Instead of going for a thousand, right? Because you know what I realized? With a thousand chickens, mm. these are so many chickens to feed, right? Without the, uh, the, the amount of experience. Yeah. You don't know which ones are sick. Yeah. <laughs> do you understand? But... If I had started with a hundred, yeah. maintain those, learn a lot from the hundred, it's easier for me to now say, you know what, let me double it. Now I'm on 200. What are the challenges when I'm at 200? Oh, right? stage by stage. Stage by stage. Now I'm at 300. So every stage comes with, with, his its... with its own challenges. <laughs> so sometimes we think, you know what, I want to go big. I want 10,000 chickens. Yeah. 10,000 chickens is not a joke. Because the challenges you can get with 10,000 chickens, yeah. It's serious. Imagine being hit by a disease in those 10,000 chickens. Vaccines only would probably cost you about 1,000. Not only that, they'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can't manage 100, how are you going to manage 1,000? Same thing with farming. Mm. You go in, practice on a small piece of land, see how it goes, then expand it. Because time, uh, chances are you're going to be layman's, just like me. I'm not a qualified farmer, mm -hmm. but I have uh, enthusiasm and I, and I have a, a lot of interest around farming. Yeah, exactly. So I'm learning as I'm going. Of course, you can also find experts here and there. But my, my thing is, do it nice and slow. Don't rush it. I'm learning. And I love this. <laughs> I, honestly, yes. I pray that people listen to this conversation. Yes. And it's going to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People are coming back, making mistakes, and at the end of the day, they don't see the bigger picture. Yes. So this, this, this is a long-term thing. Mm. You know, sometimes businesses or even farming itself, mm. we want to do it over a year. No, this is a five-year project. This is a seven-year project, but we want to do it in one year, and this is where we fail. What about educated people people claim that we are educated in zimbabwe we have never we have never left zimbabwe and say we are educated we are looking for employment we are not finding any job what's your advice to those people right my advice to that is literally if you just look at zimbabwe yeah how does this how does zimbabwe earn its uh, its uh, its money it's true it's through two things mm. mining and farming wow. so if you are coming here wanting all these type of jobs yeah. right they have to be created around farming farming now has to be the umbrella 
okay and then all the other jobs come through that engineering ai you know everything wow. else comes under farming so if no one wants to go into the farming and we're neglecting it how are jobs going to be built to support that farming we're killing our own economy exactly if we don't do that exactly we're killing we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot ah so we're crying for investments right yeah there's plenty of land here and there's a lot of knowledge to people here exactly one farm itself can develop um i mean can can uh, create employment exactly and not just in farming only you know getting your hands dirty yeah. no we're going to need engineers we're going to need uh artificial intelligence yeah. we're going to need programming we're going to need there's so many there's so many sectors that come under from undermining there's I now, mean, or farming there's now what they're calling precision farming yes you can make a lot of money absolutely I automation see. right now there's a lot of automation in farming right it's engineers that are needed. Where are they? You see what I mean? So, these are my opinions anyway. <laughs> I, I, I know everyone has their own way of looking at things, but that's how I see it. I because was. this country, yeah. mining and farming, if you want to try something else, yeah, good luck. But those are the, those are the two main things that uh, generate um, a lot of money for Zimbabwe. You know, honestly, if I'm to tell you, I was happy to see you at Adma Agriculture Show. Mm -hmm. I was really happy. Mm -hmm. And the fun fact, it was my first time mm -hmm. hearing about Adma mm -hmm. Agriculture Show. I want to ask you, what did you see? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the, oh the my lessons? Goodness. The lessons are endless. I went to an organic stand. They were talking about organic farming. Yeah. I went to the chicken stands. There was, I mean, uh, five of Right? Yeah. They were telling me about chickens because obviously I'm interested in that. Yeah. There was so much information I managed to get in a very short space of time. Exactly. I went to another place where they, uh, they were talking about exporting your organic uh, um, vegetables and stuff. So much information. There was this guy. This guy is trending right now in Zimbabwe. He's exporting agricultural products. He's like the center and people are coming in with their products and he's helping them to export. Wow. It's amazing. Yes. And all this is happening here. Yeah. So my advice is, you know what? You just have to focus on the things that are making the country mm. grow. Exactly. And that's where you need to invest in. So this is why my passionate around uh, farming yeah. is huge. I and understand. there's no way I can give up. But in terms of what's going to happen in the future, that's going to be a mystery. I'll have to call you back again yeah, so I'll you can happy. see what's happening. I'll be but happy. one thing I'll tell the audience is, yeah. I'm not going to give up. This is part of the journey and there's no way I can give up.